We live in a world today where it is fairly easy to buy a gun or just about any weapon you can dream up long as you have the money to purchase it, especially if you feel the need is urgent enough trying to protect yourself from someone you may suspect might be wanting to do you lethal harm in some way. Our founding forefathers who wrote our Constitution back in the day giving our country permission for people to buy certain guns and rifles, though the rifle was a single shot then, and the person had to stop and reload, which took less than a minute before the next shot. I doubt our forefathers could see into the future, witnessing the Sandy Hook Massacre, because if they were able to, no doubt, there would be no assault weapons in this country today, like there are none of those weapons in Turkey, for instance, except for the military and police. This is how it should be in every country, but big business doesn't care how many deaths happen to pop up on the evening news. They are making their billions like nobody's business, and they will never relent to do the right moral thing, regardless of how many children are wiped off the face of the earth. The first thing they all claim to justify their right to bear arms, saying it was only an isolated incident, no biggie. It warrants little change whatsoever, and it will be business as usual soon as everything concerning the slaughter of those innocent children blows over after three or four months. Pushed into making another meaningless consideration of a watered-down bill for a forgotten lost cause is how it gets played out in Congress. If you notice when CBS News tried to talk to at least 12 different people on the Hill, no one dared to say a word. That tells you all you need to know where their loyalty lies, especially those who will be crying wolf during the Senate hearings. Big business will continue selling whatever they can to whoever they can for as long as they can if supply and demand is there. They have no conscience, nor do they care what weapons are sold making a profit. We all know those of us who have a heart. After the Sandy Hook Elementary School meltdown, enough is enough, and all assault weapons should be banned ASAP. This is a good example of why change is needed these many years, and it is only going to get worse. When any person has a problem realizing he or she cannot receive the help they need, due to the ungodly system of things put in place by those in power or the bad decisions they made during their life, for it is hard to say which sin is worse, ends up losing his or her job, bank account, and pension they worked for all their life, their home falls into foreclosure for not paying the mortgage on time, anger and rage builds up inside until something triggers another deadly confrontation with an innocent bystander and those in authority. After a while, the person realizes they can't handle the change of grief they're feeling as it overwhelms the soul to where they flip out, going ballistic. More people will suffer demonic death, which is driving all these home invasions, the local store and bank robberies, Drug trafficking gone berserk and every country will continue to fester in everybody's backyard as death is final and absolute in this veil of tears. Long as denial and the insanity plea is commonplace while God is absent from the mix. Going about our daily lives groping around in the darkness that rules the souls of lost greedy people like those in big business are fueling people's outrage on humanity and is not an isolated incident of a mental health issue. When will America and other countries around the world learn to stand up in heart and say enough is enough? We are mad as hell and we're not going to put up with this ludicrous posturing any longer, big business or no. We owe it to those 26 living families along with all the other people that have suffered loss of life because of a demented criminal filled with delusional flesh madness of loving the power of the gun, the bomb, whatever, deceived into thinking it is the quick cure-all. 
But again, those families are left with a bitter sorrow, knowing the right thing that needs to be done will never come to pass. Those in power will never do the right thing because they have no moral heart playing the devil's advocate. It will always be about the money, sadly enough, until Christ returns. The song is entitled The Sandy Hook Massacre, and it goes like this. This kind of unrelenting, catastrophic news from any elementary school or wherever in the world you never want to hear about, see, or feel firsthand the gory details coming to pass, especially for the parents, family members, and friends of the 26 lifeless souls of bloody carnage piled up near one another on the floor, extremely young, innocent children, and those very brave adults who look death in the face wanting to stop the shooter at any cost. Everyone in authority goes scrambling for the answers to why, why this young man, Adam Lanza, 20 years old, decided to kill his own mother, Nancy, in cold blood, execution style in the face, then driving down the road to a nearby school to fulfill his deadly scheme. Adam attended Newtown High School and received honors for his grades, but had issues taking advice from his teachers and others. After a few behavioral situations, his mom realized it was best to homeschool him due to the treatment she felt the school was wanting to impose on her son. Broke into the school by shooting out a piece of glass gaining entrance early that morning, even though the school was in lockdown, targeting two different classrooms, one near the other. Pulled out his guns of choice and walked in unloading his anger, hatred on those defenseless children and faculty members, filling their tiny bodies with bullet riddled holes until the demonic onslaught was carried out. Once the turmoil was done, hearing the sirens off in the distance as the first responders burst onto the scene and were closing in, turned the weapon on himself, finishing his cowardly act committing suicide instead of facing discipline or wanting help. As every nation would, we cry out to God above and ask why, why our people along with so many in other countries take part in these vengeful, lawless acts they see on TV. The devil takes pride in orchestrating these events knowing God will be blamed for letting the crisis unfold, hoping to destroy every moral thought and hope of life worth living while people live in daily fear of guns on our streets. So we dig into the anger portion of the mind and soul that unleashes those ungodly rampages of heartless terror that spring up everywhere from time to time. Some kind of closure and healing which is desperately needed for those parents of any child that ends up dead when they should be alive and well the next day. Anger and rage stems from brokenness of spirit with no faith in anything, especially those who govern over us to do the honest thing for all the people, not just the wealthy. Every country has the same issue. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing half the time. Once the younger children figure out there is nothing in life worth living for, sensing the gift of hope being taken away through disappointments and heartaches, turned to hatred, replaces the dream of making good strides. Wishing like other people he or she sees in a family setting, finding truth in love with meaningful purpose, or just a good job that doesn't get outsourced needs to stop, means everything to any human being's mindset, having bills to pay. Society today is less forgiving, and our youth perceive this measure early on, that their hope and dreams as a person will never be realized as an underprivileged child. So anger, drugs, and guns is the avenue they ride down to vent. Deciding life is a lie, being betrayed, destroy whatever or whoever 
is in their path until death overtakes them one way or another is the easiest way out. Until people can feel respected, wanted, free to get up every day working at something they enjoy or love to attain a certain lifestyle, this cycle of violence will escalate through our youth more than not. Having enough faith and hope that tomorrow will be better by doing God's will today and not mankind's greedy method of commerce is why every country needs to start rethinking policy over again. Putting profit before truth is what is driving these senseless killings of innocent people who just happen to be there at the moment when the dizzy, lame-brained fool has a conniption fit and goes spastic. Sadly enough, people will witness many more such events as we wait for the spiritual change some of us are suffering from now. Existing in a world filled with denial, greed, and hypocrisy is the why the righteous are screaming out for to change. But those of you in power already know that, don't you? Never relenting to do the right moral thing because you don't have the stomach for it until push comes to shove when God sends Jesus back to us. And if you care less to take my word as gospel, ask the 26 families of those who were unjustly slain that can never be replaced, not to mention the others throughout our earth who have fallen victim to the gun, the bomb, whatever. When the hell are the rest of you going to get mad enough standing up to do something about these deplorable tragedies, as every nation should? That's it. The end. And thank you.